I tell you what, I am excited to have uh, the Shaver family with us this morning. They are going to come now, and we are going to light uh, this Advent candle for the third Sunday of Advent. Have you enjoyed having the, the families up here lighting the candles? All right? I know the McSwains, they kicked it off real good, but I've tried to get families in here uh, with these. Look at the little ones. And today, we're at a real special moment because I invited baby Jesus to come and light the candle today. And this is baby Jesus. We call him Brody, except during Advent, because he filled in as baby Jesus last week in our children's program. And we're so excited. Let me get, you guys have to have a microphone. Joe has no faith in me. He said, and a lighter. And what is this right there, Joe? This is not my first rodeo. I promise you that. All right. Look, do you want to do all the introductions? Sydney and baby Jesus, a.k.a. Brody. Brody. The Shaver family. All right. <laughs> Sydney, get down here. Look how cute she is. You could, she also kicked off with that wonderful, don't, don't hide right there. Look at this crowd. They want to see this pretty face. She did that dance last week to start the whole program. Wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> see? We're proud of you. So let's hear about this third Sunday of Advent Shavers. Oh, you do a very good job of lighting those candles. I was a little nervous. And on this third Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of joy. When Jesus Christ comes into our lives, uh, when Jesus Christ comes into our lives, he brings the fullness of joy. Isaiah tells us that he anoints our hearts with the oil of gladness. When Jesus was born, the angel said that his coming was good news of great joy for all people. Because Christ has come to us, we can live every day in the joy of the Lord. Praise his name. Thank you so much, Shavers. You, what a great job they did. Thank you. And we learned about... We've learned about joy today, and I want to share a little story that has brought great joy to our family, and I, I'm reminded of it when I think of Joe. He is a crazy, crazy guy, and uh, I know he's had probably a similar encounter. Uh, maybe some, many of you have, but in my family, I've told you already, we love the decorations and getting ready for Christmas, and yes, when I was a little boy sitting on a front row at Calvary Church of the Nazarene, uh, I was glad to be a part of a home that cared enough about uh, Christmas to decorate inside and out, to tell the world, you know, that Jesus Christ was here. And so we are excited to do that as a family. But every year, it took some work and preparation. And I remember one particular year, I was outside helping my dad. He had to trim the shrubs and rake all the leaves away from the house and get ready to, to trim the house with lights. And when we were outside, my brother and I were up to no good uh, while also helping uh, my dad get ready. And one of the things that we noticed was a squirrel running along the roof and it got down in between the roof and the chimney and kind of got nestled right in there where we could barely see, but its tail was just flickering a little bit. And I said to my brother, watch this. And I ran into our porch and I got a, a softball out of that porch. And I took that softball and I threw it up on the roof right into that corner in a perfect shot. I couldn't do it again if I had tried. And I hit that squirrel. And it flipped around a little bit and took off running, right? No big deal, I thought. So we went around with the rest of our day, and, and the day was over, and my mom was in the kitchen that was right off of our den, and she was preparing dinner, and my dad had just started a fire in the fireplace, and he took his favorite spot in the living room, which was leaning against, sitting on the floor, leaning against the chair so he could feel the heat coming off of that fire. And my sister was sitting in the chair that he was leaning against, and she had her legs draped over the arm of the chair and her back leaning up against the other arm of the chair. And my brother was across the den on the, the couch, I, being a teenager that uh, had perfect hygiene, was coming out of the shower, okay? So I had just cleaned up for the day. I was coming out of the shower, so you have the scene has been set. And I'm coming out of the shower when I hear this awful cheer, not awful, but there's this cheering and commotion going on in, in the den. So coming out of the shower with just a towel wrapped around me, I walk out into the den to see what they're cheering at. They're watching something on TV. To this day, I still don't know what they're so excited about that drew me into that den. 
But at that time that I walked into the den and I peered in to say, what are you looking at? And I kind of leaned in to see what the TV was, uh, what was on the TV. My dad leans to the fireplace because a log had rolled right out of the fire. And he leaned towards uh, the, the brick hearth there to grab that poker and try to get that log back in. But when he reached to grab that poker, that log jumped off of the fireplace, out of the fire, off of the hearth, across my dad's lap because it was not a log. It was a squirrel that had made its way down the chimney and it jumped across my dad's legs. He then realized what it is and by this time I knew what it was because I saw the fire in that squirrel's eyes. And he had a score to settle with me, I tell you. And he remembered what I had done just hours ago outside with that softball. That squirrel came tearing across the den. I'm out of there. I take off running. My sister, when she realized what's happened, she jumps up and runs behind me. Now, I was a, a strapping young man, so I wasn't screaming. I was just running quickly. But trust me, my sister was screaming loud, right, Mom? My sister was screaming loud. My brother realized what's going on. He joins in. He's screaming loud. He, we take off out of the den, through the kitchen. My mom, innocently enough, just preparing dinner, hears the scream, sees us running by, so she jumps in line, screaming and, and running behind us. I run back into the bathroom where I had my clothes, and, and I go into the bathroom, and three people follow me in there. My brother, my mom, and my sister slams the door behind us and locks it, because squirrels are very, very clever, right? <laughs> Slams the door behind us and, and locks it, and there's my mom trying to catch her breath. <sighs> what are we screaming about? <laughs> what are we running from? And we told her, my mom does not like rodents of any kind, and she was not happy. And my dad had stayed behind, because in his mind, he thought, if this squirrel gets in our house, we're in trouble, right? You don't want a squirrel trapped inside of your house. So he is at the door to the den, leading into the rest of the house, yelling for me and trying to keep that squirrel running around just the den. Not my sister, my mother, or my brother yelled for me. So I jump out of the bathroom, get dressed, and very similar to, uh, how many of you have seen the movie The Great Outdoors? You ever seen that movie with John Kane? This is a while ago. I came in and I was armed uh, with a broom. My dad was armed with the poker and the shovel to scoop up the, the ash from the fireplace. And we began to run around that den trying to keep that squirrel uh, running towards the door to outside. Long story short, we got that squirrel out of the house. And what was a terrifying, terrifying moment in that, that split second, once we, the adrenaline kind of settled down and, and we gathered around that table that night, we were able to laugh about that and have a good time. And we've told that story many times many times down through the years, and that story has brought great joy to our lives and hopefully to the lives of others that have an opportunity to hear that. There was another very terrifying moment that took place in a group of shepherds' lives, and I just want to share this passage with you real briefly this morning. I want you to hear what, what God's Word tells us, what Luke wrote about in Luke, the second chapter. It says this, and I know you're probably seeing that terrifying squirrel on the screen. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And listen to these words. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. I want you to hear those words. Here is a group of men terrified, minding their own business, watching, tending the flock of sheep. And out of nowhere, 
they get this great announcement. And out of their terror and the fear, I'm sure, that struck their hearts, eventually because God was in it, because they had an opportunity to encounter Jesus Christ himself, great joy not only filled their lives, but hear those words, all the people, all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Folks, I don't have to tell you this. You know it. Because if you live, if you have breath in your lungs, you know that in this life, we are going to face some tough times. God has never promised that here on earth is going to be easy. But out of all the fear and worry and just tough times that can consume our lives, I want you to hear something. When Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ is at the center of all that takes place, we can be filled with a joy that doesn't make sense to the world. We can be still filled with a joy that transforms us to the point that even lowly shepherds talking to a community of people, they were amazed out of their fear and I'm sure sheer terror because they encountered Jesus Christ, great joy transformed their lives. I want you to remember this, this Christmas season. Last night I was with Ricky in the hospital room, and he is tremendous in tremendous pain. And every few, you could barely make out what he was saying. You had to get real close because every few sentences or words were broken with, with excruciating pain. And, and with a cool cloth draped over his forehead, and I, could, I know he could barely see me out of the bottom side of that, he thanked me for coming and praying with him. But, but when I was getting ready to leave, Becky stood and told me something. She said, I want you to know something. Ricky has not missed a single opportunity to tell people about Jesus. <sighs> How amazing is that? To be in a situation like he's in, in tremendous pain. I know none of us want to face that. He still knows that no matter what happens. And he even told a family member of his. He said, I don't know if God has in store for me to call me home. I don't know if the end is near for me. I, I don't even know if I have that kind of faith that I can say that with certain, like I'd be nervous wreck. Ricky says to this, he's like, I know where I'm going. And I'm not concerned about me, but I'm concerned about you. He says this to a family member and your soul. Because no matter what happens to Ricky, as tough as it may be, he has met Jesus Christ. And that joy that floods his soul is Christmas. That's what Christmas is all about. And that is my prayer. I'm sure it's the prayer of the envoys this morning for you, that no matter what you're facing this Christmas, this is going to be a tough Christmas for a lot of you. I know. When we encounter Jesus, we can still experience that joy. It doesn't even make sense to the world, but we know. We know.